Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 77 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. Today, I'm just doing some stuff that I do. You know, the same stuff that I typically do. Ooh, do I want to... Uh, hmm. 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 Wondering if I could... Nah, I think we're good the way we are. Just rethinking how things work a bit here and there, and, you know, trying to finagle come up with better plans and such. Um, so today, I'm um, continuing work on the IC2 room at the moment, uh, which is pretty much done, and I'll give you guys a tour here in a minute once I uh, finish this up. So north will be extract always active on uh, green. Down will be insert on green, extract on brown always active. And you guys should all have cobble in you now. Hooray. Cool. Uh, and then you will be insert on brown on the down. Cool. And then you guys will kind of be the same way. South will be extract on green, always active. And you will be insert on green, extract on brown, always active. Insert in green, extract on brown, always active. Cool. So now we should have recyclers full of stuff. Each of these has three transform upgrades and seven overclocker upgrades in them. This guy's got a transform upgrade, which should bring him from tier three to tier four. Uh, and these guys are also three transform upgrades, which means we should have no explosions, which means I should be able to do this. And we've got mass fabs running again. Beautiful. I like it. Sweet. Look at that. Looks like it's working. Yay, you, you matter. Hooray! Uh, so hey, this is a 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 room that I got going on here. Why don't I give you guys a tour of some of the off-camera work I did for IC2. Uh, so basically, I uh, got pretty much everything up and running again, I believe. So we've got auto crafting of our fluid canning machine here. And if I really wanted to, I could put a facade uh, in here. And where's my painting machine? It's in one of these rooms. I think this is it. Yeah. There we go. Just to make things look a little bit nicer. Sweet. How nice is that? Uh, cool. So um, I remember I said I was going to do phantom faces. So one thing with phantom faces is the auto ejector upgrade does not work with phantom faces. Wah, wah, wah. Because there's no adjacent block for it to eject to. Like it doesn't know that there's an adjacent block, so it doesn't eject. So I wound up not doing it that way. Um, and you can see here that I've got basically... Um, a little bit of die wiring going on in here because there's actually a lot of stuff in this room for how small uh, of a space I gave it. I could have almost given this a larger, like, corner size room that has the larger areas, but did all right. So we've got um, some interfaces over here doing some machines. We've got some interfaces over here. I wound up doing the interfaces on the bottom. I found out that uh, these guys, the the um, the CF spray blocks, count as solid blocks, and you can encase your um, your glass cable in them. So if you need to run any IC2 cabling outside into a uh, you know oxygen lacking environment, you can just CF spray around it to take care of it. Uh, so pretty much everything's up and running. All the power is behind. Uh, I had to run an extra cable up here because you know our metal former has a lot of stuff in it. I could have done uh, the metal former in 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 the room with uh, immersive engineering. I could have done some metal forming recipes over there. But this metal former is just so much faster than the other metal former that like. You know, it's a no-brainer. But pretty much everything that I had up and running in my IC2 area should be up now. Um, just finished getting the mass fab up and running. The nuclear reactors are now running again because this guy's low on power, uh, which is a nice thing to see. Uh, this guy's getting juiced up again. Might want to get an HV solar here at some point-ish, soonish, maybe. Um, but that said, like we're 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 doing great. Here's my industrial grinder that I had when I had made, and that thing's up and running again. So everything's cool. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, made this thing a little bit more compact. I wound up doing a, a liquid monitor from RF Tools to monitor the amount of liquid in here. So when we hit the 90% mark, it emits a redstone signal, uh, disconnecting the power lines here so this thing stops running. Uh, once this thing gets low, uh, which I could you know, make happen with a bucket, for example, boom. See, now power is flowing again. Nice. 
And if I put the bucket back in, it should disconnect and boom, power's off. Neat, right? So that thing's up and running. Uh, made this a little bit more compact in that I've got the power lines for this running underneath the base. So you can see like a little bit there. Also got some water running from my uh, setup here. Export busing some uranium to automatically be processed in our macerator or washing thermal centrifuge. This thing's up and running. So pretty much all is well. Um, the only thing, you know what I haven't set up yet? Um, and I totally could right now. I just have to figure out where I want to do it because I don't have an interface super close by. Um, where should I do this? I have to set up the interface um, with the uranium fuel rods um, and the item filters and all that good stuff. Um, so that needs to go into an interface somewhere. And I should probably, because I'm going to be playing with uranium, put on this suit so that I don't, you know, have problems. And uh, I just have to stick that on an interface somewhere. Realistically, it could really go on any interface. Like this one, I guess, would work. I guess it wouldn't hurt to use that one, right? And we could just run it down. Oh, this thing's kind of in my way. Where can I hook up to this interface? You know, I could just stick one in, you know, a new one in here. It doesn't matter because we're doing really good on channels. Uh, so I could just grab an interface um, and stick it somewhere like... I mean, it super doesn't matter. I kind of want it to look nice, but, you know, that should be fine. That should bump up to four channels. Yay. Cool. So that should sort, that should do its thing. Uh, I should have a crafting card in here, maybe. Yeah, I do. Sweet. So now you'll auto craft quad fuel rods for me. And uh, basically, we can hook into all these dudes. Now, how did I manage to place something behind you? If I could figure out how I do that, I'd be a genius. Uh, sweet. Uh, maybe I should run this across. Yeah, oh, it's cool. It's all good. That'll do. So that's good. Um, so for you, that is empty cells. That's not what we want. Quad fuel rods. Yeah, you. All right. So you're gonna extract on green. Always active. Only depleted uranium. You're gonna extract on green. Always active. Depleted uranium. You didn't extract anything, right? Yeah, there's nowhere for green to go right now. Extract on green, always active. Depleted uranium. Um, and we should make sure that we're matching MBT data. So, or metadata, both of those things should match. I think that's important. Um, and then we can set you to insert. No explosions. <sighs> explosions would be bad. I think a nuclear explosion on my satellite would be a terrible thing. Uh, and then you can be extract on brown quad fuel rods always active and you can be insert on brown cool insert on brown insert on brown extract on green extract green insert brown extract green insert brown so that should work right so you should extract always active quad fuel rods so that should be pretty much done. What else is in this thing that I didn't put together? Uh, I've got some empty cells laying around. The rolling machine, I forget if I ever had to do anything with the rolling machine. I don't really remember. I'm um, thinking I didn't. But I think that's about right. Um, I'll just go ahead and clear you out because I don't know what that was for, I forget. We've got our solar arrays, which I might start teaching this thing. It shouldn't be too hard to teach it how to make solar arrays. Um, some other stuff that we didn't need. Fluid tanks. Sure, sure, sure. All looks nice. Go away. Uh, my UU matter is in there, by the way. So the heat conductor I didn't need because I had a liquid heat exchanger. That's what I was using to make basalt or whatever. Um, I will get around to making that when and if I feel like it. At this point, I don't. Uh, so that's cool. The crafter that has all the stuff in it, um, the, the triple compressed cobble and all that. Um, that can just kind of go away for now. Um, HV transformer, potentiometer. This thing was used, remember, for my detector thingy. So I think 
put all this stuff away because we're pretty much done with this room. Um, we've got some item conduit speed upgrades. You guys are keeping up with your cobble demands, right? Yeah, you are. So that's cool. I don't think I need item conduit speed upgrades then. Um, I guess you could say, like, give them all one more boost in speed and see how that works out for them. And I think one or two of these I threw energy upgrades in just because I wasn't sure what to do with them, but I remember now what I had energy upgrades for. I had six of them, which makes perfect sense that they belonged down here. You were supposed to get one. Cool. Boom. Nice. Alright, cool. So that should help out a little bit. So, eight overclockers. We'll see if that starts getting a backlog of scrap. So, IC2 room is done, guys. Like, everything's working. Everything's done. I can take this crate away now, because we finished it up. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hesitant to wonder, like, what left at the base at this point. Uh, we can pop home and find out. I know I've got, like, um, my my thing, uh, my, my big reactor. So what left to move, right? At this point, um, mob farms. Um, I don't know if I want to be spawning a wither in a, in a satellite. That sounds like a really bad idea. Um, so what I could do, and, and lots of people noticed that this wasn't chunk loaded, and you guys are correct about that. I did not chunk load this area, um, which is fine. A little bit of a derp on my part. Probably should have paid attention to the chunk loading here. Loaded chunks limited! I can unload these chunks. I don't think I need them loaded so much anymore. You could stay loaded because you're a Bob Farm component. That should be fine. Cool. Um, so that's definitely a thing. I'm thinking I might want to leave this here in the overworld um, because it is completely autonomous for my base, right? Like it doesn't hurt anything and it should in theory just work. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to move that to the space station, but this thing right here, we can totally move the mob farms over. Um, this place is pretty much empty, which is nice. Um, all kinds of good stuff going on here. My mob farms, or my sheep farms cruising. I uh, threw some wheat in here between episodes because we were getting to that point. Also, I threw dark shears in there, which apparently was a really good idea. <laughs> hey, that thing's happening still, where I lose connection. Only when I'm here. Doesn't happen when I'm in my, my satellite crazy. Um, ore processing is still going on down here. So the things that are left to move, we've got ore processing happening uh, here. We could easily move that because we've got the setup in the, the satellite to handle that. Um, we've got this thing going, the manulin um, turbine, which I don't even know if I'm going to move because if I do solar, I don't need this anymore. And then I don't have to worry about the, the tree farm or the oil thing. Um, you're, why are you on? Because you should kind of be off at the moment because your buffer is full. Yeah, that, that you should be off, buddy. How's my Eulorium situation, by the way? Not bad, still 5,000. Cool. This is disabled at the moment, um, but it could go back on. So my Void Miner, I'm probably going to want to move my reactor. We don't really need this setup anymore. This was just temporary. Nothing is needed for this anymore. Uh, we are rapidly running out of things that need to be moved. Like, we're pretty close to done here. Uh, a couple of these things, right? So, like, this setup for, like, Restonia. That will be easy to move. Um, this setup, pretty easy to move. Shouldn't be a problem. Um, a lot of this I'll do off camera, because I feel like, I feel like we're in pretty good shape. Isn't there a lower basement? No, I'm in the sub-basement already. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much left here, guys, which is cool. I'm excited about that. Um, most things are cleared out at this point. Sweet. Uh, well, I guess one thing that could be moved is these guys. Could totally be moved. 
Like, because I don't need my crafting terminal so much, but pattern terminals I do need, um, as do I need an interface terminal. So it would be nice to have those at the space station, maybe even multiples. Uh, I should move my tree farm at some point. So I was thinking, I was thinking it out, like how I want to have this base look. You know what else I want? I wouldn't mind a draconic teleporter. I think it's about time we got one of those bad boys. Um, you, advanced dislocator. I need eight. Cool. Dislocator. Cool. I would like to have one of these because they are great to have. Teleportation core. So there's your pulsating mesh. So I'm going to need two glowstone ingots and two atomic alloys. This should work. Two glowstone ingots and two atomic alloys. See, we lost out. We lost access to everything again, and then it's going to blip back. Weird, right? That that happens. Cool. So now I should be able to make a dislocator with some blaze dust. Good. That's not broken yet. <laughs> and then you can be combined with uh, three ender pearls, a wyvern core, and four draconium ingots. Sweet. Look at all the crafting. Go, crafters, go. No crafting job active. Crafting job active. Weird. We're definitely losing connection across that bridge. Um, and again, I still have no idea why that's happening. It might be something that I misconfigured. It might be like a weird fluky bug. Um, oh, this electric diamond thing is still in the overworld. So that's a thing. I might wind up just leaving a few things in the overworld that I don't want to move. Like I said, like the wither one, for example. Um, we'll see. Um, I would like to test in my test world if breaking that um, lightning attractor thing causes it to lose its internal buffer of power, because if it does, I might just not move it in, in the real world. Um, so to the Draconic Crafter we go. Boom. Oh, that's right. You have to be like this. And you should start going. Nice. So the reason I want to make this is it's just going to be a little bit easier for me. Um, man, that is cool to watch all the lasers go through and everything. Whoops. That's what I wanted to check. Beautiful. Uh, the reason I want this thing is uh, it'll be nice to get around town, basically. We're going to need some under pearls. You can go away, you can go away, you can go away, you can go away. Sweet. Nice. So, uh, let's add fuel. Out of ender pearls. Sweet. I don't need a sign here anymore, I know what this is. So we will... Um, Let's see, let's face north when we teleport here, right? Um, at a new location, we will name it um, Space Station. Cool. Hey, what? Okay, cool. All right, weird. But now that's right. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, and then if we want to go home, like our old base, we can set this location here. Add new, old base, commit, sweet. We'll lock these guys in. Uh, so now if I want to go to the space station, I can just right click on it. Or if it's the currently highlighted one, you can see in the bottom right, you can shift mouse wheel to change the location that you're going to teleport to. So you can just right click and then boom, we're the space station. Or you can right click on it in the interface to get back to our old base. Sweet. Um, so dislocator, I no longer need you. Uh, you are my way around town. Nice. All right. I think what I'm going to do is maybe move some stuff off camera, so I'll be right back. You know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to move stuff off camera. I'll do that in between episodes. Uh, what I think I'd like to do is look into getting 
some draconic armor. And I'm curious to see how draconic armor will handle an oxygenless environment. Like, will it completely protect me from it? Will I just take damage and impact the shield? Like, what's the deal? I want to start working on that stuff. Let's see what the guidebook has to say, by the way, about Age of Engineering. So what am I supposed to be doing in the Draconic Age? Um, dimensional Builder, yada, yada, yada. So we don't really need to do that because we have a lot of Draconium. Like, courtesy of our... Um, yeah, we've got 10,000 Draconium ingots, basically. So I think we're okay there. Um, not going to be too worried. So really, the only thing that's left for the guidebook uh, is the creative age. Um, the first thing you can get is creative flight with the angel ring, uh, which needs grid power, and you can upgrade it to wings of the bats, which is cost-free flight. Um, so the angel ring is a little expensive, it looks like. Yeah. Not terrible, though. Totally reasonable. Enchanted ingot, huh? Ooh. That looks, uh, it's a lot of ingots with some liquid XP, huh? How do we get liquid XP? I think you can get it from, um, the, the XP thing that we have going on. So that's one option, right? Um, then you can start to work towards creative RF power and a creative capacitor bank from Ender IO, which needs a chaotic core, uh, which we have to kill the chaos dragon for. Uh, you can get creative EU power with the quantum generator and creative jewels power with the quant creative energy cube for mechanism by just exchanging those items in your crafting grid. Cool. Quantum generator, huh? There's a quantum storage unit, quantum tank, quantum generator from IC2. Neat. So that must be, okay, cool. So got it. So, and then you can be used to make a creative energy cube. So basically mechanism. So like you can create the creative capacitor bank, right? Uh, with all these things. Neat. Draconic flux capacitor, chaotic core. Vibrant photovoltaic, elite solar. Yeah, lots of things to make if we want to get to that point. Um, and then we can convert that into a quantum generator for IC2 unlimited power, which we can convert in exchange for mechanism unlimited power. Nice. Also, there's apparently an atomic multiplier from Calculator. Um, it replicates items for the cost of seven circuits and 1.5 billion RF. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. I could try that. What was that called? Atomic multiplier? It does say, though, that some items are blacklisted, but that doesn't look terribly hard to make. Red, oh, so stable stone, calculator plug, fabrication chamber, that looks easy enough. Though we do have to get some dimensional transfer going. So we should make a dimension just for the purpose of getting dimensional shards. Well, I guess there's one way to test that all the auto crafting and work that I've put together the last few episodes has worked. Uh, I just requested some wyvern cores, and I requested another dimensional transceiver. Uh, of which there is much crafting to do. Um, dimensional transceivers take a lot of crafting, and that'll tell me if I, like, derped anything up along the way um, by failing to, you know, do stuff. Uh, I gotta load balance these uh, alloy smelters at some point, uh, and to do that, all I need to do is put the same crafting recipe in each of the interfaces. So that shouldn't be too bad, uh, and we'll get to that eventually, but everything else seems to be working pretty well. Um, what I'd like to do, I was going to get some wyvern armor, but then I realized uh, I need uh, some wyvern cores. And for that, I do not have the necessary tantalum or coal powder. So I missed a recipe that I need to change. That shouldn't be too bad. We'll fix that somewhere along the line. I just have to figure out where in wyvern energy core I have coal powder sitting. That's, uh, that's a thing. Coal powder, huh? Who needs coal powder in a wyvern energy core? Octodic capacitor, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, he's the one who needs coal powder. <laughs> All right, so we'll fix that. Um, and we need more tantalum. So what I think I'd like to do... So we need to get some more uh, of the metals. So tantalum ore is on Eris, right? So what we should probably do at this point is set up some kind of mining on any of the planets that have ores that we need a decent amount of. Um, so, like, we need a lot of tantalum, right, um, for now, because that's going to require for some of the draconic evolution stuff, right? So I need to go to Eris and set up something. So let's get a builder, which I think I've still got from when I was, you know, building. Sweet. Uh, and let's get a quarry card if I can. So how crazy. At this point of the game, a quarry card shouldn't be too crazy. Uh, looks like a lot of stuff, but... It all seems reasonably doable. Uh, not super impossible. Yeah. 
Cool. So let's, I guess, get one. Like, so I don't know if I could have a quantum quarry because you can specify a dimension for a quantum quarry. I don't know if I can do that and make it mine like a planet's worth of ores. So that I'm not 100% sure about. Uh, ooh, we're going to need some diamond and iron ore. Uh, that I think... I've got at the old base. I think I stored some for future use. Yes, I've got diamond ore, but I don't have any iron ore. It shouldn't be too bad. It should just be a matter of letting this thing run for a minute. If you're running, cool. So stuff is processing upstairs, I presume. Cool. So let's have you... I don't want to break this if I can avoid it. Let's do... I'll just break this one. Uh, and what that'll do is it'll prevent the outputting of ores for a few minutes. So I'm going to let that run for a little bit just so I can collect like the raw ores that I'm going to need. So we should have some now going in. So yeah, raw ores are starting to show up and not be processed, which is pretty much what I want. Um, and that'll allow me to, in a bit, I'll go ahead and set up the export bus that's going to be responsible for processing ores through the mechanism machines. Uh, so that should be cool. Nice. So if I want that quarry card, definitely a lot of crafting to set up, but it all seems within reason. That's a white lens. I should go back to my main base because being here, things are wonky. Cool. Uh, just trust me on that. So we're going to want two of you. We are now out officially of environmental text class. So let's get like 20 more. Uh, let me craft this off camera real quick and we'll be right back. I'll let you know if there's any like interesting crafts needed at any point. You know what? It's really not bad crafting this at the moment. It seems to be going pretty smoothly. Uh, so far, we're about halfway there, which is cool. Uh, we're also going to want Phantom Booster. That's not going to be terrible. So another weird thing, this doesn't craft unless I'm in this dimension. I don't know why. Like, it just gets stuck. As soon as I show up, the items start showing up in here. So weird cross-dimensional chunk loading issues. Um, but soon everything will be at the proper base, and that will be... Kind of nice. Uh, so you now need the drill and you need four iron casings. Which shouldn't be too bad of a request because I made in advance a bunch of advanced machine casings. Cool. Oh, wireless out of range. How does that keep happening? This thing, for whatever reason, has been dropping out of this like crazy today. So there's your vertical digger. So how are we doing here? We're almost there. Super almost there. Um, that's awesome. All right, still got some crafting going on. Uh, working on a teleporter at the moment, uh, which you can see we are currently waiting on some silicon, it looks like, and a few other things. Uh, but once we have this, or no, wait, is that the teleporter that we're waiting on? This is the teleporter we're waiting on. Yeah. The other one is uh, some other stuff. But yeah, this thing's cruising. Nice. Wireless out of range. You're killing me. For whatever reason, today, this one's popping out of here like crazy. So let's do this. Uh, are you done yet? Almost. You're probably working on the lapis bit now. Yeah, you are. Cool. Almost there. Nice. Uh, the last part of this will be the diamond miner, which requires a stone, wooden, this guy. We just need a furnace. So, wooden miner can become stone miner with a stone pickaxe, can become iron miner with an iron pickaxe, can become diamond miner with a diamond pickaxe. Sweet. You should have your teleporter available, and now we can make a quarry card. Awesome! We did it, guys. We did it! Alright, so we're going to wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. I want to set up a quarry in the uh, Eris dimension or the Eris planet. Um, then we might set up quarries in other areas, 
based on when and if we need lots of amounts of ores. What I'm probably thinking I'll do is just let Eris run for a while, get a bunch of tantalum, and then take the quarry away. And then next time we need a lot of something like from another planet, and you popped out again. I gotta like watch the footage of when this pops out and see like if there's a key button I'm hitting. Or I don't even know what. Anyway, uh, signing off, Daryl20. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, coming back next time to get quarrying. And I'd like to, so no more moving. We're done moving. I'll do any more moving that I need to do off camera. For now, take it easy.